The world is changing. 51 years ago, the War of the Wilds came to a stalemate. The people of the Grainor Peninsula set all plant life ablaze to stop the stranglehold and built a mighty wall to keep the wilds at bay. All the while, they sat atop their monument, never truly knowing why this all began. A likeness of peace blanketed the blasted lands. One year ago, it all changed. An ancient god, once bound by old magic, found himself free and took his vengeance as his shackles were shattered. The mountainous city of Bulwark paid a grave price, but in the wake of this destruction comes the first glimpses of the possibility for true and honest peace. Our heroes venture from their familiar homeland into the fullness of what their world was before the war, a world they've touched but never truly seen. They find themselves caught between a land that has tried to end their lives hundreds of times over, and a country they helped decimate. Under the canopy, they seek glory, truth, and salvation. The world is changing, and their hands will guide it. Hello, and welcome to another path. My name is Chase, and I continue to be your GM. Today, our heroes meet with Mr. Aram and learn of his mysterious benefactor. Thank you to our backers, Atan, Everett, and Patrick for their support. And with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. So I'm a moron. Yes, yes we go know. on. Continue. Mm-hmm. So today, I had one of those moments, and I'm sure you all have had similar moments before, where something just got stuck in your craw and you couldn't get it out until you know you were going to fix it. In my what? In, in your your crawl, oh, your mouth, oh, like like a like oh, a like a curl. Yeah, I, I okay. didn't know if you meant like your brain space or your butthole. Oh, or like or like or brain. Chase, you are uh, moved to a new place. I didn't know if you had a crawl space underneath your house that you stored mm, your uh, very spoopy Halloween decorations in because it is now October. It is October. I had a, a moment, and it's been bubbling up over the past like week or so, where I hated my desk. My desk was is loyal. It is stalwart, but it is shit. Um, I inherited it for free from an old job I used to work at when the building shut down, but the job kept going. I said, hey, I, I need a desk to continue to do work at home. And the boss was like, take this essentially Rubbermaid desk. Oh. Mm. Hmm. But here's the thing. It's a foldable desk and it has a very low profile. So it stores and moves trivially that sounds great for a card table and it has outlived every other desk i have bought because (laughs) i have bought other desks and they have all disintegrated on me when i go to move them (laughs) so i was driving home from work today he's like i'm gonna go to walmart and see if they have a desk that i like that will fit in my new office and sure enough, they did. They have a great L-shaped desk, Ooh. and it's perfect. It's, it's exactly what I'm looking for. It's got just a little bit of an L off to the side. It's got some shelving That's up nice. top. It's That's really nice. Choice. So I buy it, and I think, all right, I'm going to put this together. This can't take more than like an hour and a half tops. Two hours later. <laughs> but I am I am now sitting at a, oh, at a very oh, nice we're going on a, L-shaped we're going desk. On a, we're going on a tour. I, yeah. Webcam hey. tour. Hey, look at it. But yeah, no, this is going to be incredibly useful for potentially doing streaming stuff. Like, I actually have a little bit more room to set things. I'm not hunched over, like, with my dice buried behind my game notes and whatnot. (laughs) Because that's not a good look. Nobody likes that. Chase, new desk. I I am still sitting Mm -hmm. at my desk, which is a very, it's a nice desk. I would like to have the L, but uh, it's a nice desk. And my parents bought two when I was uh, 14. Right before my freshman year of high school, I got one and my brother got one, and we both still have them. Uh huh. This was nice, nice. Mm-hmm, years ago at this point. So uh huh. It's a good desk. It's amazing what a well like a well made desk. I've got I've gotten a lot of work, good use out of it. So it'll be good to see how long yours yeah. lasts for you, Chase. Oh, not long. It was a $100 Walmart desk. It's going to die as soon as we leave the, this apartment, and then I will be back to old I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I bought my desk on Facebook Market for $30, and I mean, I, Griffin, you've seen my desk. 
It's a huge ass. It's, it's a, a huge ass desk. It's a big ass desk. It has two computers. Yeah, on. It's, it mm. is d- used for both myself and Nicole. I kind of wish she had her own desk. I, I love you, honey. <laughs> I love you very much, Nicole. That's the, uh, that's the most. Uh, that's the most. 20, 2019 thing I've heard today. So I bought yeah. this desk off Facebook <laughs> for thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. It wasn't sketchy at all. No, it was great. The guy like uh, was uh, like, apparently was a flight attendant uh, and was like moving to Houston, mm, and so like great. had just got off a flight and ca- like was like, "Hey, I'm running a bit late. I just flew in from like Miami. I'll be right there." And boy, are my arms tired. Were his? Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> this this my desk. I haven't had that much of a problem with. It's just a plain old flat top black glass top desk. Desk chairs, however. I go through by, I was going to say the dozens, but that's insane hyperbole. Um, It's because I... You've had several bad ones. I sit cross-legged in chairs, and so I wear wear the same spot out. Well, well, then I would assume the arms of the chair kind of get a nice flex. Yes, no, if you listen, that's the right Ah. arm of the chair that's wiggling. The left arm, totally fine. This chair is currently held together by gaff tape. Gaff tape? What can't you what do? What can't you do, gaff tape? Oh, gaff tape. Gaff tape is currently holding my sofa mm-hmm. together. Hey, this one's for you, gaff tape. <laughs> this episode get a ta- hey, gaff- dedicated to gaff tape. <laughs> dedicated to daff tape. <laughs> <laughs> The turtle child, Morris, guides the three of you, Zephyr, Mordecai, and Baylet, to a house that seems familiar. Not in shape, but in style. Not specifically, but stylistically. Um, easily the most Grenoran piece of architecture you have seen since coming to this side of the wall. Largely made of stone, it is, its stout and blocky architecture instantly puts you at ease. Um, Morris opens the door and inside the sparsely decorated walls and floors reflect the style that had long reigned supreme in the lands of your upbringing. Minimalist. Unused. Ready for action. You're taken up the stairs to a pair of double doors. Morris opens them, revealing a room lined and accented in wood. A few bookshelves line the room. The bulk of the space is dominated by a single stone desk. A human stands behind the desk, almost silhouetted by the light pouring in. Matric Aram, as a plaque on the desk reads, washes his hands and a basin set into the desk. And he smiles at the four of you. Thank you, good Morris, thank you. Please, close the door on your way out. Avail yourself of whatever you'd like in the kitchen. Thank you, sir. And he shuts the door. I think I think we're taking the stance of Zephyr's the face, I'm the muscle. Kinda like kinda like how Jackson would. I'm I'm kind of mirroring how I've seen Jackson do this in the past, because I am so suspicious. Um, is this Here's just, just a weird question that you know your description got. Is this the most amount of wood we've seen in sort of one structure, I mean, like no, ever? Not any, not anymore. Well, that I mean, that's fair. It is definitely the most wood you have seen in something that is styled after a Graynor building, except King Graynor's study, living, dining room area. That place had a lot of wood. Gotcha. Here, this is. Like, especially for decoration. The the fact that this building is made of stone is very strange for out here. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, yeah. I mean, it, lest we forget, Zephyr is very into home decorating. So <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> that's definitely one of the first things his eye was drawn to. All right, we'll uh, jump back to uh, to Jackson. Uh, Jackson, you and Amareya Dejani sit, and uh, pretty soon after your fellows leave, dinner is brought. There's a couple of little rotisserie chickens just ready for y'all to tear into. What up with your friends? Uh, they got called away to meet, uh, what do you call him? Orem. Oh, him. Yeah, do you know he's, anything about him? Yeah, he's alright. He's, uh, he's, uh, what's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Little eccentric. Well off folk, um, magic user. Doesn't really stick his nose into business. Uh, family moved out here a couple generations back. Oh, okay. Sounds like decent sort. Um, could you get me some water while you're? Of course. I'm about. I don't want to get too. 
you know. <laughs> That's a wise thing. One after the other, you gotta stack them like that. And she's mostly talking to her, herself as she's walking away. Amare Adizani uh, leans back in his chair and just kind of looks from side to side, taking the room as a whole in. Um, does, uh, does that name ring any bells? Gold? I think that's what mm, Mordecai said. Not specifically, but if they have information we can find useful, it is, uh, it is not out of the likelihood that he is uh, related to some old family of mine that followed me, or some folk new that have taken up the mantle in the intervening years. They called me the forebearer. I still get some of their prayers from time to time. Would it be weird for... So we saw those Darkwing creatures, right? Mm-hmm. The the Fae-type ones? The Darklings, well, we yes. kind of saw them, yeah, yeah. but they, they shot at us. But mm-hmm. Kyron said that uh, the the bounds between this world and the Fae Wild out here could be thin. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is it weird for me to want to find Gaia? Not at all. You spent a lot of time together. She is a part of you, and you are a part of her in a way. I think that's entirely a reasonable thing to want. It's weird because, like, you prayed to I prayed to her, and then she was my arm, <laughs> and then you were supposed to be my other arm, but now I'm more like your right hand, and that's. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of that, but is it, it's fine, right? Like, you, the plan was for both of you to be part of me anyway, It's so. fine, Jackson. I do not take offense. You did not ask for me. Not like this, not really. You may pursue whoever you want. You may follow who you want. I just ask that you get me home in the process. I promise. Thank you. Now, I, I do have a... Kyron, I've got a question for you. Ah. I have a very, very important question. Where the fuck did Estia go? The, uh, big shits. <laughs> Fair. I get that. Long day of travel. <laughs> no, I get it. No, I right, look. Soon. What can I do for you? So I have an important question about the language out here, because I'm very confused. Yeah. So on the map you gave us, mm. right, we came from Sange and now we're in Clove, right? Yes. Okay. Why is this pronounced Clove and that pronounced Sange? Why isn't it Clove and Sang or Sange and Clove? Uh, the, the G makes it uh, the long E sound. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, this language is fucking nuts, but all of them are crazy in their own ways. Uh, yeah, some. this is just worse. Yes. This is way worse. It's not really organized out here either. Is it Lee or Lee Lee A? It, it, it's Lee. The, it's the double Lee. E does the long one. Okay. But it's not Lee A uh, or it's just it's one syllable. It's not Lee E. Yes. Yeah, it's it's Lee. <sighs> are we just Lee all right, are we leaving in the morning then? Is that the plan? Uh, keep going. Probably, unless we've got something to keep us here. I guess I wouldn't mind sticking around a to- see my family but otherwise a day, or, a day or two is probably not bad no they're we're not on a hard deadline they're gonna wait for us and he nods his head towards Amareya Dashani. that's fair we get to uh, we do have hmm, it's rare that Lee waits for anyone normally they are only at the whims of uh of the lords but now that we've got something like one of them with us, it's a little bit different. Well, it is nice to kind of see the different ways people live over here. Yeah. Also, I have a question um, that is probably rude, but I'm going to ask it anyway. All right. What was the Morris? Is he just, is that a... Oh. Is the, that a different race? Oh, the, the little... Oh, the, the, the turtle. Oh, he's a, a turtle? Tortle. Uh. T O R T L yes. Okay. Not tortile. <sighs> no. I'm just I gotta make sure. No, I'm trying I, to learn no, here. I, I understand. I'm willing to help you. Okay, but his name was oh, so his name was Morris. Yes. Cool. What's the drinking age over here? 
because I feel a little bad. <laughs> Don't worry. They can actually hold their liquor better than dwarves. He's fine. Okay, good. Also, whatever the parents decide, but if he's working for somebody else, then, uh, then you know, he, he might not have proper folks about anymore. That's true. As soon as you can uh, work for somebody else, you can buy your own beer. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Exactly. Did you have a nice trip in, gentlemen? Yes, it was quite um, scenic. Um, we uh, had a bit of a run-in with some darklings, but other than Ooh, that... Um... I am sorry to hear about that. Those are... Uh, I mean, you can't help when the fade grows thin, but it is what it is. I thought there was another of you. I'm sorry. Yes, um... Big shits. Big shits and, <laughs> and all that. I understand. I understand. Yes, uh, well... I suppose he pauses for a moment and kind of looks up a little bit and roll me a perception check. Hit dexterity saving throw. What? <laughs> a lot of perception this one around. I'm fine with it. That is 22. 15. Okay. You see, he, he looks up and um, he's not looking like directly up. He's looking kind of over your shoulders. Both of you realize that he is actually not looking like up at the ceiling, but up at a mirror sitting above the door. It's a nice looking mirror, but very strange. It is taller than it is uh, wide, kind of like a uh, a full length mirror almost. Except that it is very, very small, probably no larger than a foot. Um, the outline of the of the mirror is uh, the actual frame itself is gold, and it looks like a very tiny door set above the big door that you came in. Magic eyes. Magic as fuck. Okay. Do you have a a, a school of magic? Conjuration. All right. Hmm. He he looks back at you all. So, it's done, then. Over there, the rumors are true. The great dragon is freed. My dear, uh, Autumn, yes? Yes, yes? Autumn. Zephyr, it's very good to meet you. A pleasure, I'm sorry, yes. Where are my manners? I'm sorry, I'm... Metric, Metric, Autumn. Zephyr, a pleasure, and... Bail it. A pleasure. Bail it. Mordecai. He nods to each of you and... Surely you can understand our, um, caution. Of course. In divulging a lot about why we are here. I understand. Now, I, I do need to know how you know this. I have seen it myself. You and I are of similar minds, Zephyr Johnson. I am not Zephyr Johnson. You know? I'm sorry. My information must be out of date. Zephyr Shanestiliath, it's very good to meet you. Oh! Makes sense, of course. My apologies, Master Shanestiliath. You walk with the deep. This, I know, this is relatively public knowledge. I walk with another, one who endeavors to meet you. One who has an offer for you, if you'd be willing to hear it. And at this, Master B leans forward. And who do you serve? I serve another who has an offer that they would like to make to you. They have information that I have not been imparted to. Information about a holy site to the one you travel with. I'd be very interested. Bailet? Hey. I'm curious. Mordecai. What's the catch? Catch is you gotta go to her. I believe it's a hurt today. And where will this journey take us, exactly? Their home. I believe you're familiar with the process. What do they go by? Luck. Huh. Well... <clears throat> Mr. Orem. We will need to... confer with our company in its entirety. Surely you understand? Of course. Absolutely. I'll be here until... Uh, for... Well, this is my house. I live here, so I'll be here for a while, but I'll be up for another hour or two. 
would ask that you try and make your decision this evening, though. Luck waits for no man. Pithy. True. And that's why I pull off my helmet. I am no man. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, yep. I'll show you out then. Thank you. And he walks around uh, the the desk and he waves his hand over the basin where the water sat. And uh, the water vanishes and the basin reflattens itself, joining itself with the desk. He graciously but decisively takes you to the door and shows you out. Uh, you can follow your own footprints in the very light snow uh, right back to the tavern. And you meet up there. Yo, what the fuck? Um, uh... Ah, hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, we're all good here. Thanks. That's good. Uh, how are you? There's um, a seven... uh, Hang on. Let's all sit down. Get real close. Uh, Circle up. Can we get? Can we just get a, foot, a couple more drinks, please? Yeah, and I see tiny. I see the remains of tiny chickens. I would like a tiny chicken, please. Yeah, all right. You see, Fax is up at the bar helping her father out for a moment. Uh, the the old man, um, Dante, behind the bar goes to move to get you some, uh, to get you tiny chickens. Fax yanks them out of his hand and comes around the bar and hands them to you. Thank you. How'd it, how'd it go, guys? Pretty well. Um, the the man, uh, Matrik Aram, apparently serves um, a patron much like myself or Bailet, but uh, is known as Luck. I don't know if that just means Luck as in Luck, but they apparently have an offer for us. Um, well, Amare did say there were more. Yeah. Especially on this side. Yeah, that tracks. Just strange to hear it in such a, a a a base concept i guess but if this is everything it seems um it seems like they were hinting at possibly giving us the location of a holy site for amarea that would be interesting to me yeah but if it's around here that might be what's setting me unsettled if you don't want to do it if you don't trust this offer we don't have to take it. I want to make that clear. I would like to find it, yes, but I imagine that my power will come to me fully in time. So I'm also a dipshit and didn't once roll insight in that entire fucking conversation. <laughs> so I don't think you needed an insight check t- to realize that that guy was sketchy as fuck, though. I mean, yeah, but like, I wanted to know, like, was he actually sketchy as fuck, or did we just make it to be a lot more sketchy than it actually was? Mordecai thinks he's... I think he's sketchy as fuck. Can I roll a posthumous insight check? You can. It's it's not posthumous. Nobody died, thankfully. The moment died. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can absolutely do that. Awesome. That's that okay. is... I, cast, I cast Spare the Dying on the moment. <laughs> Thank, oh, okay, it's back. It's back now. Yay! Yay! Um, no, that, Hi. now that was an actual 14 plus 4, 18. Okay. He was 100% sincere about everything he said. However, this is not necessarily a, um, when he said that you two were similar, he just meant that he was a warlock, not specifically what type of patron, yeah. but that he got his powers from a patron. Yeah. Hmm. And two, Arguably, more importantly, this information wasn't coming for free. This was a d- invitation to go to the realm of the patron and uh, have this discussion with them. He was not able to make an offer. He did not know where any of this, you know, where this holy site would be. Right. But the patron knows, and the patron knows how to get you in there. I, with the information we have, I would, I am comfortable mm. with what is happening. Everything that we do from this point on is going to have some degree of risk involved. And if this is something that is going to help Amarea get your powers back, which is the main reason we are here. Well, not the main, but one of them. It's a big part of it. If I am more powerful, I may be able to help you all more. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fair hand with a sword over the past year, but... I could be doing more than that. If I had some 
Old artifacts, some of my old weapons. Maybe I could even start making new stuff. Ugh, a dream that would be if we found an old forge. Hmm. With that, I I think we should go. Well, you all, you all saw, were the ones that talked to him, so... Don't get me wrong, Jack, I'm suspicious, but... I mean, we would be crazy not to be, but sometimes the reward outweighs the risk. And I th- what did you say the patron's name was? Luck. Luck. Amorea, any any bells going off? Not by that name, but patrons change their name from time to time. He did make mention, a strange thing that he mentioned, um, in determining, it seemed like their their persona sort of shifted. He said that perhaps they'd be like this, uh, I think he said as a, as a woman presently. That it's, or... a, it's a she today, is what I believe he said, yes. Any patrons that change their gender most of them honestly depending on just the day sometimes they're just feeling a little more one way than the other who's to say not me here's a question uh bail it yeah the golds are like a lot of the old graynor families were my mom always said sorceress lines that's a different Mm. type of magic than what you and saphir do right absolutely yeah that caught my attention as well the sorceress house that well Twelve or thirteen, depending on how you count it. The sorcerer's houses are carry magic in their blood. Like not everyone in the you know, sorcerer's bloodline gains that ability, though. Exactly, uh... Zephyr. Exactly. It is entirely possible that Matrik or maybe one of his parents, they came, they were born into the family, and were uh, not the purity of blood that was desired. Kicked to the curb. Came over here. Yeah, that 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 scans. Simple enough. Uh, they like to sweep those stories under the rug, or send them in the army and hope they get killed in combat. It's a dirty thing, but it happened. But, Jackson Mordecai, all I know is that if anyone is ready and is capable of walking into a warlock patron's realm and making a deal. It would be us three. I mean, yeah. That is um, a fair statement. You know me, and I'm not usually the person to um, fling my body in the way of certain danger, but... Um, no. I think we should go. All right, Zephyr. You convinced me. I'm on board. Are we, are we all going? I can go with, or I can stay with Amorea Dejani. From what y'all have told me, it's not like... Beings of great power can cross into these other planes like mortals can. That is true. All right. I'd feel more comfortable if you waited with Amorea. Absolutely. And Amorea, yeah, that you're not going to be able to go, but hopefully we can bring back a location. It's fine. I felt weird. Ta- it, it felt like I was talking to myself when I was talking to Matrik, and I always like to avoid that when possible. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go meet a god. All right, this old chestnut. Number seven, here we go. Is it seven, or is this actually six? This might actually yeah. be... Well, I mean, not, we've met on Rhea. He's right here. Yeah, but... that Seventh this, god, two, sixth realm. Is this... Or is this, like, 2.1? Oh, my is goodness, this, can this, we is, go? <laughs> <laughs> Luck be a lady tonight. All right, all right. bye, Kyron. All right, have fun. Um... Let me know if you need anything. We'll be yeah. here. Just keep an eye on these two, will ya? Yeah, all right. I'll make sure they don't get into trouble. <laughs> Come on, Roga. <laughs> on, on to the shoulder. Door clatters open, and the snow is falling in full force now. The three of you trek back down the road, the take the corner, and walk back in to Matrik Harum's house. Uh, Zephyr and Mordecai, you are greeted by a familiar sight. Jackson, you, for the first time, are greeted by the oddly familiar building, a square stone structure uh, amongst all of these sloping wooden houses and uh, smaller shanties. That looks like something from back home more. Yeah. I guess if you're from over there, you still don't like living in a wood house. I get it. Mm. I don't think I'd want to be surrounded by trees. Yeah. 
this he's a he's an interesting fella. Um, I can't get, I can't really get a beat on him yet. He seems to be honest, at least. At the very least, he seems to want to help Amareya, and that's enough for me at this point. I think I can take that. Yeah. Snow falls gently as uh, you all approach the door. It is a plain wooden door. Do you knock? Yeah. I knock, but then open the door. <laughs> like <laughs> they, were, they were expecting us, yes. Like, hey, it's us. You hear scuffling from upstairs as this wild-eyed man comes around the corner. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh good, you came back. What, were you worried <sighs> we would not? Yeah. Yes. I was. Please. All right. Please. No, we're here. Come with me. I'm sorry, I didn't... You'll, you'll be Jackson, correct? Captain Silver, nice to meet you, Mr... Aram. Aram. Matrick Aram. I'm just gonna go with Aram. That's fine. Most people do. <laughs> Please, come with me. As we walk up the stairs, Mordecai quietly hums under his breath, Silver and gold. You are led up the stairs into an ornate office. Um, while most of the house has been lined in stone, this one is largely wood except for the desk, which is large and made entirely of carved stone. He takes a seat behind the desk and, with a flick of his wrist, is able to uh, conjure water in the middle of the desk uh, in a basin there. And he takes a knife out from under the desk and pricks his thumb ever so slightly. A single drop of blood falls into the water. All right. Should be just about good then. She'll be ready for you shortly. Crack and open the portal. Of a sort. And he looks up behind you. Mordecai, you remember seeing uh, the strange mirror door. All right. She's ready. Just, um, just brace yourself, I guess. Very helpful. As he says that quickly, you see the shimmering flat surface of the mirror spread out from the door itself. Uh, it shoots out, covering all of the walls, excluding Mr. Aurum, as this uh, metallic surface just wraps around the entire room. I, I, I don't think we're going anywhere. I think it came to us. This is this is new. Oh, great. The mirrored surface covers the window, and as it covers that window, darkness fills the room. Um, you are standing for a moment just by the three of yourselves. I would need all of you to make me a perception check, please. Uh-oh. It's a 17 plus 4, Ooh, 21. it's trash. That's going to be a 10 for Mordecai. Uh, 14. Uh, the 21 will notice it first when the lights start to come back. They come back like lamplight. Jackson, you feel a dampness in the air that wasn't there before. The utter lack of humidity from the snow is gone, and now the air is damp and moist like a hot summer night. Oh, I, I wish... I wish the snow was... I, uh, this armor is gonna... Oh, man. <laughs> Mordecai, your eyes finally start to focus as well, and you can feel that gross summer dampness. But more importantly, you see a wall. A massive brick wall, probably about ten feet in front of you. It shoots up into the sky, far beyond your ability to ken or comprehend from where you stand right before it. The wall is flat red brick, as far as the eye can see in either direction as well. And in front of you, there is a single metallic door. And above it, a sign seeming to flash in magic just says lucky. Wait a minute. Um... Is this it? I just look. I, I, there's just brick, brick wall, and a door. Oh, yep. okay. Um, What's if you behind look, us, uh, you look behind you. Uh, you see a flat, endless expanse of red, cracked dirt, and hmm. it, even beyond that, darkness. Well, that explains the weather. Looking up, uh, you see a cloudy night sky. Breaks in the cloud show a beautiful, stunning night sky. 
but that sky is not meant for you to see. Okay, well, he said that this was a patron of, of luck, so currently it's all on brand. Um, I mean, we're not expecting danger, right? I think we're, well, yeah, I don't think so, but I mean... I just walk forward, knock on the door. <laughs> the door seems to give way at your knock. The room is dimly lit, and it takes your eyes a moment to adjust. You see a smoke-filled room. The smoke is sweet and aromatic. The floor is carpeted and bright colors uh, intermingled with blacks and greens. Is this a casino? What the fuck else would it be, Griffin? (laughs) Yes, it's a casino. Where else would the patron of luck post up? Hold on. I I would like to make a perception check. Of course. Hopefully this one is... That's a fucking natural 20. What's the sign? What's it called, Chase? What's it it called? Give it to me. It's it's called Lucky. Oh. Now I'm just disappointed. I'm sorry. It says it right on the the tin. I'm just disappointed now. Oh, no. I'm... I'm... I'm woefully underdressed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, use disguise self and put a, uh, change my clothes to a nice tuxedo. Excellent. Yes, it's crushed velvet. He's, he's got like a, a nice purple uh, lapel. And uh, ooh, it looks real good. Is there a cravat? Uh, no, 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 a nice bow tie. Oh, nice. Yeah. You did say tuxedo. That's my mistake. I'm really you, you can have a cravat with a tuxedo. I can see it. I, I, okay. Especially if there's like a vest underneath. After I watch Zephyr change, I look it down at myself and realize that maybe I need to do something else. So I uh, take a second, and uh, the knot at the base of my throat that holds the cape, I change it so that it is tied into a bow tie. <laughs> please, please may, may, may I? Yeah, is it crooked? No, I, I, I untie um, and then I like try to like fashion it into like a toga almost. Oh, oh okay. like off the shoulder. That works. Yeah, like a sort of off the over, you know, off the shoulder. Like the what's it called? Uh, like the Assassin's Creed capes. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a half cape. Yeah. yeah. Toga cape. Make it look a little, make it a little classy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, it's like it, a little bit. It's a fear for funsies. Roll me a sleight of hand. I do nothing to my appearance. <laughs> As anticipated. It's a thirteen. Okay, you are you are able to perform this action satisfactorily. <laughs> there we go. The three of you uh, walk through this massive metal door, uh, which seems to grow as the three of you approach it. You join Mordecai at the door and walk in. The sights and sounds of this place seem to be overwhelming. In addition to the incredibly loud carpet and uh, thick aromatic smoke, the sound of this place, lots of uh, tinkling of coin, arguing, pleading. You're you're walking by tables and tables of people seemingly playing games, uh, but you're not immediately seeing obvious attendance to them. Go ahead, if anybody would like to, go ahead and roll me an applicable check if you would like to learn anything about the place you are in. Well, that was actually going to be my question. I had a question for you, yes. Chase. Do we have, do we as characters have any reference for what a casino or even like a gambling uh, hall Gambling hall, be? yes. Certainly, especially, frankly, as soldiers. Uh, you, yep. right. you know, you know a game of dice. You know what it looks like when a lot of people are playing games of dice. Right. But but at the modern understanding of a casino, this the decor is fucking wild to us, right? You have heard tell of places like this. <laughs> places where the, the wealthy the where casino. wealthy go to play games of chance. You may have been to one at some point, like maybe, you know, a, a senior officer took you or Mordecai, maybe your dad took you for a birthday once just for fun cuz I think I think a brother definitely dragged me once. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fucking Kerut and Benjen, like, dragged me out as, as like, part of my quinceanera. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Jackson and, Zaf- uh, and Zafir, please feel free to decide if you've been to one or not. Oh, no, Zafir's most definitely, like, in his either d- disguising himself as someone else to, like, find some information he needs... Or, like, trying to rub elbows with people who might be able to slide some cash towards his cause. Oh, like, 100%. Like, the, there are some clubs that you attended back in Bulwark and Larada, especially, 
um, that are Murata. notably yeah. seedy, and you mm-hmm. notably love them. Yes. Uh, now, here's my question. Does the decor, yes. um, is it, what in, in Zephyr's opinion, mm-hmm. be tacky? It edges up on it. It's so close, but fuck, it's classy. Uh, I like it. All right. Um, well, I think what Zephyr is trying to notice, you said that there's just, like, people here. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Which is strange. So he wants to know, uh, uh, look at maybe roll insight or arcana to see if, like, are these people actually here or are they, like, set dressing Absolutely. to make us feel more comfortable? Whatever's higher for you. I'll give you either. That is uh, 14 plus 5, 19. Uh, with a 19, you look away. You notice somebody that is wearing uh, a notably ostentatious outfit. It's this guy. This motherfucker, he's tacky. You oh. look at him, and then you look away, and you look back to see what this tacky motherfucker's up to, and he's gone. And you notice that every time you turn your head, the people change. They're Things definitely here in an aspect, but they are not physically present. Hmm. Jackson. I have an important question about the music. Absolutely. Now, is this is this more of a, like... Uh, Tanya Sway, Cat Perry, or are we talking more like My Alchemical Romance or Dragons of Imagination? <laughs> uh, it, it's more of a Bobby Serenade. Very, all right, all very, right. very classic style. All right, all right. Um, is the there some? Rats. Yeah, exactly. The Pack Rats. Is uh, so we've got uh, the Buble. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bubbly. Maybe so, the Bubbly. Mike playing. Bubbles. Mike. <laughs> Please, please, Michael. Mich- Michael Michael Bubbles. Bubbles. <laughs> Michael Bubbles. Michael Bubbles. <laughs> I, am Mi- I am Michael Bubbles. I am here to sing for you. <laughs> oh, no. But it's awesome. He's great. Who? Everyone loves Michael. His buddy Frankie Sin just trades off notes with him. It's great. Are we going to keep going with music jokes? Or no, I think we're on? good. I think, I, right. I think we I think hit the notes. That vein. Uh... Yeah. I intend all of my puns because I'm not a coward. <laughs> so, so there's we have a casino in front of us with some great music. There's there's strange ghost people, or not necessarily ghost people, but like not entirely present. I guess uh, you know Mordecai thinking of this as a a straightforward thing. Like we're we have been in patrons' <laughs> realms before. Mm-hmm. I just. I think Mordecai just above all the hubbub just kind of starts shouting a little bit. Just like, hey, <laughs> we're here to talk to the boss, I think. Hello, Orem sent us. I'm going to go over to the nearest uh, nearest table mm-hmm. um, and I'm going to very quickly see if I can figure out how to play craps. Okay. Roll me an intelligence check. Oof. 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 <sighs> well... Well, well, that that is a natural one. Yay! <laughs> also known as a zero. So, you walk over to a game, and it's like that episode of How I Met Your Mother where they go to Atlantic City. Oh, yeah, and they play, and the, they play the, the bean weird. game? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. play the bean game. <laughs> They're just sitting there. They're just they're just playing blackjack and halfway through it I I uh halfway through it I yell craps. <laughs> Did um, I win? Did I win? Nobody acknowledges you. And you get kind of embarrassed and start to walk away when you notice that a lot of the tables, they aren't even playing games. They're just talking. They're just talking at what at originally you thought was candlelight, but it seems to be little just motes of light. It's at this point that Mordecai starts making a hubbub in the middle of the room. Hello, lady luck person. Immediately at your side, there is a woman. Shorter, lithe built, and jet black hair uh, that goes down to her shoulders in a little bob. Uh, well, hello there. Hi, right, do you know how we can find the person in charge here? And she gives you a look. I don't know what that means. We're trying to find the boss. I, I think I, I think that that's her. I... Thank you, Zephyr. She is actually dressed incredibly, almost workman-like. Zephyr outstripes her by a good stretch at this point, but she wears not a fancy black dress, but a black dress. That goes very well with her hair. 
Hello, it is nice to meet you. I give her a, 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 a nod. And you as well, Master Shenestilioth. That I'm going to um, act like that doesn't freak me out a little bit. Um, these are you... my compatriots who I'm assuming whose names you already know. Absolutely. No, I am, I am quite close with many of your associates. I... I was going to say, word gets around in the patron verse. Well, when five of them immediately show up after being gone for several hundred years, you tend to ask your former colleagues what they've been up to. You know that's fair. I'll, yeah, that, no, that, yeah. Gentlemen, please, come with me. And uh, she nods and extends her hand, and she motions through a very obvious path through the gamblers that you did not notice beforehand. And she takes you to a stage where there is a gentleman up on stage dropping some uh, some Mikhail bubbles. <laughs> you all take a seat at a table that she motions to. On roots, I want to tap Zephyr and like kind of like to point out the stage, and be like, "Hey, it's your it's your domain." Um, and <clears throat> while I do so, I'm going to cast enhance ability for charisma. <laughs> Smart. I'm not going to walk on stage in the middle of a performance and rip the no, mic. I'm just saying, like maybe if there's a if there's a slot open, if it's like an open mic sort of thing, <laughs> uh, then possibly. The three of you take a seat where she indicates right in front of the stage. It's great seats. So I like to cut immediately to the to the quick of the matter. As fortune would have it, and she winks. The local miners, uh, under the employ of Mister Aram. Uh, recently uncovered a, uh, a structure of sorts. Tawan Amareya Dijani. It has been lost for a long time. It has been corrupted for a long time. It is a dangerous venture to take, but if you take it, there are things down there you may find useful. I imagine so. I know that Amareya Dijani is without a great deal of his power. Part of the reason is that in order for us, as patrons, to create artifacts, we must give of ourselves to do them. Two of those artifacts are within the temple. Oh. That would be a great deal of power if we could get them for him. Or activate them, or uncorrupt. Uncorrupt? I look over at yeah. the boy. Mm -hmm. De-corrupt? De Sanctify, de I believe, is the word. She takes a seat. There's a drink in her hand. It is water. Clean up the mess. I'm not in the habit of handing things out for free. Luck is an agent of balance, and I must maintain balance. At some point, I may call upon you again to do something. And as a, uh, a sign of good faith in that effort, there is something down there I would like you to get from me as well. Mm -hmm. In that same room that you will find the book and... The hammer, which was one of his chosen weapons of the time. There is a box sitting on a shelf onto the side of the room. There is nothing of consequence in it for you. I would like you to get it for me. I would also ask, and this is important, you do not open it. That's fine. Um, I do want to warn you, though. Mm. Maybe, maybe I'll start with this. I'm fine with not opening the box. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to perhaps ask what is inside of it. Because the last time our curiosity got the better of us, something very bad happened, and we're known to be dangerously curious. Nothing of consequence to you or anyone else. Mm, that doesn't really help much. It doesn't. This is an act of trust. A sign of solidarity. Hmm. Alright. Well. It is entirely up to you. There will be no ill will meant to you or any of your fellows if you decide to not take this quest. It's fine, I understand. But, Amareya Dejani was a good friend of mine at one point. We worked together well. I would like to see him return to power, but in his current state, frankly, the three of you are much more powerful than he. And I need you on my side as well. I need to know that I can trust you. On your side versus what? What is the other side? Or are there a bunch of sides? Is, are we talking about a coin? Or are we talking about, like, a six-sided box? It's, um... Did you ever play Foursquare? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
It's a battle. Think of battle. But nobody's really murdering each other. They're just talking very emphatically. And the lines of the armies shift regularly. So, oh, like uh, uh, politics? Yes, politics. Ah. The politics out here are incredibly nebulous. It's difficult to tell who is going to be doing what. I know what you're heading towards. I know you're going to Lee. You may want my help. Like I said, I am luck and I control balance. But these are my terms. Promise to me that you will return this box to me. And you will have free reign past the guards to get down to the temple. Cross me, and there will be consequences. I recognize that I am trusting you because you have the full ability to go down there and then not get me the box. Or open the box before giving it to me. Know if you do either, I will know. I am... Mordecai feels in a really interesting place because I feel like he a little bit of deal making rubbed off on him from the Wanderer. Makes sense. Just a smidge. Not 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 to the point where he feels like an authority figure on the subject, but that he knows how dangerous deals can be. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, this is a kind of looking to Zephyr and Jackson. This is for Amareya. This is important, right? It's important that he gets stronger. It is important and... that he gets stronger, but if it's at the cost of Amareya being indebted to what would eventually be considered, and I kind of look uh, like slightly apologetic, but I don't try to hide mm-hmm. anything because it's her realm and sure. she would know anything. Yeah. Uh, if we get his power back, I don't think it's great for him to be indebted to a lesser being. And she takes that. And she thinks. Look, I'm sworn to Amareya at this point, and I'm going to do everything I can for him, but that also means making sure he doesn't make poor decisions to get where he needs to go, or where he wants to be. Well, what of this then? What if I promise you I will not hold this over his head? He will not be the one that would be indebted to me in any way. It would be the three of you. I would never ask you to go against him, or I'll even go ahead and say any of your immediate family in any favor that I would ask of you in the future. Can I make an insight check? Of course. Isn't it... I'm sorry, this is a tangent. Isn't it a weird thing, players out there, when you make an insight check and you see like, I'm fucking making that insight check, I don't believe you, fucker. Or it's like, I'm so sorry... I don't know if I can trust yeah. you, and I'm I'm sorry, but I need to. I just need a little right. It's one or the two. I just need a little Mordecai guidance. Mordecai has had his distrusting modes every time. It's like I just need a little guidance, or it's fuck you. You're lying to me. Like there's there's only two options. Yeah. No, there there, there, just, there is no funny. middle gear. I I am trained in insight. All right. Uh, that's a fourteen. Okay. Um, she seems on the level that. She she does not appear to be lying to you in any way. I... Hmm. I find this agreeable. Like I said, you don't have to make a decision now. The miners at the Orem mines are always there. There's always somebody keeping an eye out. They are incredibly lucrative. Lucky how he managed to find that particular spot. <laughs> I think I just have one more question. May I call you Lady Luck? Mm-hmm. Um, you you said that your your whole so all the patrons have their own deal, right? You've got they've got their own shtick. Like there's the seer who can see everything, but he's also a weird beach ball. And then you know there's Gaia who's like the queen of plants and fae. Mm. And then and then there's a giant hole of riddles that is that's is a fierce thing and. But you're 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 luck, and you talked about being the the person who makes sure things swing back into the balance mm. all the time. Is this is doing this is getting Amareya his power back? Is that throwing things off balance because they need to be, or is that setting things right? Setting things right. Things have been off kilter for quite some time. 
as the three of you well noticed, uh, because you grew up in a place where plants were trying to murder you all the time. Yeah. You say that like it should be a problem. I suppose your people did manage to solve the problem to a degree. However, it was at a great cost. Mm -hmm. That's true. Putting Amorea Dejani back in his celestial throne, this is... This is returning the world to order. And I would like to see things return to order. It would make my job easier, certainly. Well, we'll, we'll take this back. and I think we'll, at the very least, talk to Amorea and at least check out the mine. Very well. And go from there. When next we see you, maybe we'll, uh, we'll have a little Candle Knights gift for you. When next? Very well. I give a, I stand up and give a little bow. Very good. And she stands up and waves her hand, and the glass that she was drinking from vanishes into the ether. She starts to guide you out, and um, the smoke clears first as you start to uh, leave the building. Although you are nowhere near the entrance where you came in, uh, quickly. Other things start to change. The humidity, which had leaked in with you, um, starts to go back into that chill of the uh, of the wild winters. And the darkness that is the low light of the realm itself dissipates around you, and you are standing outside of Aurum's home. Oh, that all right. I hmm. I guess if you if you move in the other realm you move, you in, move in, in real, real life, life. <laughs> uh, I don't remember steps <laughs> um, I, that was a new one yeah um, okay uh, let's go talk to Amorea and see if he wants to do this because I, th- I, I think, think I'm on board I think I'm on board too do we head back to okay. the ever after inn yep is there a small turtle boy around? Uh, no, he has gone home. He actually went home after he dropped off uh, Zephyr and Mordecai uh, back at the at the Aurum estate initially. So the three of you head back to the Ever After. Amore Dejani is Ever. sitting at Ever After is sitting Sorry. at a uh, is sitting at the table that you left him at um, with Baylet. Um, dinner has been served. The three of you sit down at the table with Bela da- and Amareya Dejani. Well, um, we all talk at once. Well, it seems that um, wherever this luck is sending us is, um, in fact, an old tomb, uh, not tomb, but um, shrine of yours, Amareya. And she claims that there are two artifacts of yours that are down there that could possibly significantly return your power to you. Indeed. Yeah, she talked about a book and a hammer. I don't know if these strike any bells to you. But <laughs> well, I, you could strike, strike some strike bells hammer. with the hammer, Get... but uh, oh, yeah. there we uh, go. I'm hanging up with you guys too much. <laughs> and he says with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I have some ideas of what the book could be. I, I penned many tomes in my time working above, and I have given them to my followers. This could be anything from a book of prayers to knighting ceremonies. I do not know. Uh, the hammer. I did make a few hammers. Uh, they were uh, they were how I conducted business. Well, why have two tools for work and play? Uh, uh, yeah. But I guess, Amorea, my question is, is there anything about this patron you can remember? She yeah. wants us to... If we do this, to bring her back some box of which we cannot open, and she was not inclined to tell us what was inside. Hmm. She, she sounded like yeah. she knew you, though, from before. She, it, she said you are all friends, old colleagues. It is true. I did work with many of the patrons on a very close level. It is how the Wanderer knew me so well. It is how Gaia right. knew me so well. Yeah, she knew us because when aforementioned patrons reappeared back in whatever realm they all reside in collectively. I guess they had coffee or something. The God Pub. Yeah, the, uh, they, had, they had a drink at the God Pub and, <laughs> and spilled the tea, as it were. <laughs> it's good tea. I wouldn't know. I spilled all mine. Fair enough. That's, that's, that is the tea. 
It's been a while since I've been to the Ambrosia. But no, seriously. I know of luck. It was the Lady Luck you spoke to, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. She speaks plainly. She speaks truthfully. Want is another beast. Want is uh, not dissimilar to uh, your own Mr. Wanderer. In his... Oh, but I like him. And he likes you, which is all the difference. Fair. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. Yeah. From what she was saying, we would be only helping you and gaining her favor. The problem that you will run into is that not everybody on this side of the wall is necessarily a fan of these patrons. That's fine. I mean, they don't need to like these folks for them to be useful to us. Now the question is, do we want to be beholden upon a being that we do not know? That is really the only to, hang up here. Having to come when she calls, that is could be a great hindrance to that progress in our mission. She did say that it would only be the three of us, and it wouldn't affect you, Amorea, so that's something. And if you want, and this isn't any sort of cleverness on my part, but it can be me. I mean, Zephyr, you've got the deep in your pocket, and you're kind of like from the start of this whole Aegis thing, you've kind of been spoken for, and Jackson, you've got Amorea to watch out for, and I don't want you to be beholden to anything that would make you shirk your duty. I can take this one. I don't think it's going to be a, a oh. right of ages situation where she's going to cling to you. Oh, no, no, you. no, but, like, the that, that want in turn can fall on my head. That's fine. I just don't think that she will go for that. It seemed very clear that she wanted the three of us. I, I figured I'd at least throw it out there. If she goes to someone and you do not feel capable of doing it, you can talk to her about passing off the duties. She is usually fine as long as something is getting done. Yeah, just... That works. The thing that's in front of me is I'm seeing a favor to be gained and a friend to regain something that he lost. And that's good enough for me. And if that falls down on my head, I can live with that. You know it's not going to fall down on just your head. I know. But I think the potential unknowns don't outweigh the obvious gains. That's where I see it. Well, Mordecai, and that's when Zephyr pulls his, uh, his mandolin off his back and sings, Where you lead! I will follow <laughs> anywhere. And I, I, I sing the rest of the Gilmore Girls theme song. Because <laughs> um, that's all I can remember from the Gilmore Girls theme song. That's more than I know of the Gilmore Girls theme song. Hold on, let me get Brittany over here. That's a pretty good theme yeah. song. <laughs> will you want me to come with you? Or me? Well, um... I don't want either of you being by yourself. Well, Luck mentioned that the guards would let us through, yes? Yeah. The, the guards would, but... And I don't know if this is just the GM knowing what's up, or if you're <laughs> mentioning it, but there uh, was something said about the corruption as well. Yeah, no, yeah. there's there's danger down there, and it could be worth having Amorea around to identify the artifacts. Or maybe oh, even... Cleanse it. Find a use Amorea's power as like a dousing rod in the right direction. Well, let's do this. Let Amorea, why don't you come with us mm. and um, bail it. Eh. Uh, why don't you um, stay here at, well, maybe not here, here, but like in town here and uh, see if you can't get a better lay of the political landscape, so to speak. That's not a bad idea. Jackson, I almost want to make you roll intelligence for that, because that's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, that falls right under your strong suits, Master B. Yeah, I can go ahead, talk to some folks, see what the factions are looking like, and I'll, I'll have a report for you all when you get back. I mostly just don't want to learn about the political landscape, so that's why I'm passing it off on you. Oh, no, totally fair. 
This is, look, this is my bread and butter. I don't like fighting. I'll be very honest with you. I'm very afraid that something is actually going to happen sometime when you leave Amareya Dejani with me. No offense. It's just the truth. I, well, now I, we know to never leave you with Amareya no, Dejani. No, it's fine. I am a learned man and I am a talented warlock. And Gimbal, wherever the fuck he is, is usually pretty good about keeping my ass protected. However, I am afraid constantly. <laughs> but it's a good fear. It's a sharp fear. It's like a good sharp cheddar. Exactly. You it don't tastes- want to eat it, but it's there. And also expensive. Why is cheese expensive? I don't know. I mean, I get why it's expensive on our side because, like, cattle is kind of hard to come by because you got to feed them. And that's a thing, and people normally want more meat, and meat keeps weirdly better. I'm going off on a tangent. I'm going to go get another drink. All right. So let's uh, let's stay here for the night and check out the mine in the morning, boys. Sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com. On Twitter, at AnotherPathPod, and our network, GhostLightMedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at Patreon at Patreon.com slash AnotherPath. A special thank you to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find me on Twitter at TQLoudly, Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht Griffin at Griff Cole, and Zach at that guy, Zach Robb. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, and until then, remember that luck favors the bold. This has been a Ghostlight Media production.